Hi, I'm Dr. Evan Matthews. I'm here at Montclair State University in the Exercise Science Lab to talk to you about doing electrocardiograms. Uh, so there are slightly different locations for placing the electrodes on the torso or on the body, I should say, uh, depending on the setting that you are working in. So make sure you understand where the electrodes go within the type of setting that you work in. All right, so I'm going to be teaching the electrode placement that is most common in an exercise science type setting. All right, so that means all the electrodes are gonna go on the torso. We're not gonna be putting electrodes on the arms or legs because most of the time the person is going to eventually exercise and anything that's gonna be on the arms or legs is going to be a, a tripping hazard and it's going to give sort of erroneous data because there's gonna be way too much movement. All right, so if you're new to doing electrode uh, placement for an ECG, I recommend placing a marker dot on the skin of the individual before you get going. So this is just a nice way of uh, sort of assessing where everything goes before actually placing the stickers on so that you're not messing up once you go to place the stickers on. The arm electrode is going to go somewhere outside of the deltoid muscle but near the deltoid. So it's going to be in that soft spot sort of right between the deltoid and the chest where there's usually a little bit of a, an indent of the muscle. So that's where the arm electrodes go. And so you're going to put one on the left arm and one on the right arm of the participant. All right, so it's not really on the arm, but it's, it's near the arm. So again, these are electrodes that uh, in a resting situation where you're not planning on doing any exercise with them, you may be able to put these electrodes actually on the arm somewhere. For the leg leads, so you're going to look for, typically you're going to look for the hip bone and the bottom of the ribs, and you're going to go about halfway in between those. Sometimes you can also just go in line with the, the belly button of the individual and place the electrodes there. So make sure it's not too far on the outsides of the person, so you don't want it on their flanks because you don't want it being rubbed whenever they're walking and moving their arms. All right, so the next six electrodes are called the V leads. So there's V1 through V6. So starting with V1, you're gonna feel for the ribs in the chest on the right side of the participant. All right, so typically what I do is I just kind of put my fingers uh, just below their clavicle on the right side and I kind of do this walking motion with my fingers. And the reason why I do this walking motion is you can feel each time you press down whether or not there's soft tissue or hard tissue underneath your fingers. Hard tissue is typically going to mean there's a bone there. Soft tissue means you're between bones. All right, so what you're looking for is uh, the space between bones. All right, so electricity doesn't go through the bones nearly as well as it goes uh, between those spaces. All right, so I walk my fingers down, again, starting at the clavicle, walking down. Usually what you're gonna find is uh, you're not gonna feel a whole lot um, in the first few inches um, because there's a lot of muscle there, there's a lot of tissue there that kind of cover up the bones, but eventually you're gonna feel this big sort of divots. All right, so that big divot is typically going to be the second intercostal space, so the space underneath the second rib. All right, so we are gonna walk our fingers down until we find that second intercostal space, and then we're gonna keep walking our fingers down until we feel a third and then a fourth intercostal space. All right, so the fourth intercostal space on the right side of the chest is where the V1 electrode goes. The fourth intercostal space on the left side of the chest is where V2 goes. So they're in the same space, just one on the right, one on the left side of the chest. Make sure that when you're placing these marker dots and eventually the electrodes, that you're staying off the sternum of the individual, so that breastbone of the individual. So you might also want to feel for the chest and find out where that breastbone is, and then go to the left and right of that, um, maybe a centimeter or two on both sides. All right, so again, fourth intercostal space, a centimeter or two off of the sternum on both sides of the chest. That is V1 and V2. V3, usually what you're going to do is you're going to skip that for the moment, and you're going to go to V4. Okay, so V4 is, so the rest of the electrodes are on the left side of the chest, so V4 is the middle of the clavicle, so feel for the, the one side of the clavicle and the other side of the clavicle on the left side of the chest. Find the middle of that, and you're going to go straight down on the individual, uh, finding their fifth intercostal space. All right, so now we have V1, V2, and V4. Remember, we skipped V3. V3 is going to be halfway in between V2 and V4. All right, so there's a little variation on how you can place this. Um, if this is a truly resting uh, ECG test and you're not uh, doing any kind of exercise, that is a slightly different situation than when you're doing exercise. So with exercise, you want to make sure that your placement is such where you're gonna have minimal movement of the tissue. All right, so 
If you're doing resting, you can just find those two dots and place it right in the middle of the two. If you're doing an exercise test, which is what we're gonna be oftentimes doing in our settings, um, you're gonna wanna go outside the muscle or outside the breast tissue. So if you imag imagine where the V2 is, in, so the V2 and V4 is, find that midway spot, and then you're just gonna go outside of the, um, outside of the breast tissue or outside of the pectoral muscle. All right, so it's not perfectly in between the two, it's an inch or two off to the, um, the midline of the, of the individual, um, but it's still between them on sort of a north and south basis. All right, so now we have V1, V2, V3, and V4 all placed. V5 and V6 are fairly easy to place. So V5 is simply in line with V4. So if you find V4 and you go around to the, uh, the side of the person on that left side of the chest, uh, and it, so it's in line with that and then in line on a sort of front and back basis with the front of the armpit. So in line up and down with V4, in line front and back with the front of the armpit. V6 is continuing that line from V4 uh, past V5 and then in line with the middle of the armpit. All right, so V4, V5, V6. Okay, so when you're placing those, just look for the V4 and then move yourself around that uh, in a straight line, essentially. All right, so there are also some variations on this that you might see. Some people will try to stay within the fifth intercostal space, and so then you'll actually have to palpate as you go around the person. And what you're gonna see is there's sort of a curving up of that intercostal space because the ribs kind of curve upwards towards the armpit. Um, so. Some textbooks will tell you to curve up and stay in that fifth intercostal space. Others will do the more simple technique of just straight, staying in a straight line. Then what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to rough up the skin with something. So you can use a rough paper towel, which is what I'm gonna be using here, or you can use a very fine sandpaper or just a really rough cotton towel. The point of roughing up the skin is you wanna remove some of the cells on the top layer of the skin. So the top layer of skin is dead, it's fairly dry and it doesn't conduct electricity nearly as well as the deeper layers of skin do. All right, so rough that up, go to each spot, roughing it up, and then you, what you need to do is you need to clean each spot with an alcohol swab. All right, so the reason for this is to one, remove the dead skin cells that you just sort of scratched off that are still on the tissue, and two, to remove any oil that is on the skin. So the whole purpose of this part of the prep, so the, the roughing in the alcohol, is to um, increase conductivity of the skin because that's what we're looking at. We're looking at the electrical activity of the heart, so conductivity is very important. So once you've finished doing the roughing of the skin and cleaning with the alcohol, then you're going to give it a second, make sure the alcohol is dry, and you're going to apply the sticker electrodes. All right, so when you apply the electrodes, go around the outside of the electrode and make sure that you have a nice seal with the adhesive on the back of the electrode. And just give a little bit of pressure, a little touch to the center of that electrode where that um, little metal piece is. And the reason why you wanna put that little touch there is on the back of that metal piece uh, facing their skin is a little bit of conducting gel and you wanna make sure that's in good contact with the skin. All right, so go ahead and put those 10 sticker electrodes on those 10 locations that you've marked and prepped. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to strap the, um, the belt for the electrocardiogram wires onto their hip. So make sure that you strap it off to the side, so either the right or left side, so that they um, aren't tripping over the belt when they're on a treadmill if you're going to do a treadmill test. Again, if this is a strictly resting test, this part isn't quite as important where you place the, the belt. Um, but the belt's gonna have a big box on it that's gonna have wires coming off going to all those electrodes. So put the belt on the person and it's just, a, it's a pretty simple belt to figure out, but you just put the strap in and clip it closed. And then make sure it's tight enough where it's not gonna fall off if they're standing, but not so tight that it's uncomfortable for the person. After you have the belt on, you're going to go to the box itself, grab the wires next to the box. So um, as soon as they're coming out of the box, grab them there and then pull those wires up and away from the rest of the wires. So one at a time, pull the wire away. And the reason for doing this is just so the wires aren't tangled when you're uh, uh, doing whatever testing you're doing. So if they're tangled, they have less slack, there's gonna be more tugging on those wires and it's gonna be harder to get a nice clean signal. All right, so pull again, one wire at a time, pull out of the sort of mess of wires and at the end of the wire on both sides, so one on the side connecting to the box and the other on the clip of that actual wire, it's going to say which electrode that is. So it's gonna be 
RA for right arm, uh, RL for right leg, then LA for left arm, LL for left leg, and then V1 through V6 for the ones across the chest. All right, so make sure that you connect the, um, the alligator clips of those wires to the appropriate electrode and that you're minimizing how much tangling you're doing of the wires uh, as you're connecting them. All right, so with the GE case system, the, um, the alligator clips are a little bit stiff, so what you're probably gonna have to do is squeeze the allig alligator clip and then put your finger on the back of the metal portion of the electrode and kind of push it into the clip uh, as you are um, squeezing it. All right, so that's gonna allow it to sort of snap into place and then you can let go. All right, so if you're doing a exercise test, it's also not a bad idea to get a little loop of the, the wire coming off that alligator clip and tape that onto the person. So the reason for doing that is as the, uh, the wires are sort of bouncing up and down as they're walking or running, what you're gonna have is it's gonna be pulling on that loop rather than pulling on the electrode. So it just gives a little bit of a slack loop to the electrode wire. All right, so in this demonstration, we were having the person stand up while we're applying all these electrodes. That's just to make it easier for you to see in the demonstration. Um, you can do it standing up. Lots of people do prefer it that way, but um, I recommend having the person lay down. That way they're already in the position where they're going to be while doing the resting electrocardiogram. Um, so you have minimal adjustments once they do lay down. Also, um, having the person lay down is just a little easier on the participant. If you have any questions, please put those in the comments below and I'll try to get uh, back to you on uh, my answers to your questions, or at least my best guess to those answers. Um, otherwise, please come back and watch another video. Thanks.